In this video, we're going to start our exploration of a specific family of functions that we refer to as exponential functions. And as you might guess, uh, the word exponential implies that our exponent has something to do with it or that that's important. So we're going to start by looking at their rules and then kind of branch out to what their graphs look like. A lot of this will be uh, graphs in their transformations, but we want to start with basic uh, knowledge of their rules. So we're going to say that any exponential function is a function of the form f of x equals a to the x where, and you'll notice underneath here, I've changed this a and this a to a b, but I want you also to notice that we could write this f of x equals a to the x as f of x equals b to the x, or y equals b to the x. The important thing here is that this is some number a or b, uh, and that what's true about it is that it is some positive number and it's not equal to one. Given that we have some function where we have some positive number as a base, we say some positive non one number as a base and some exponent x here, we can look at this as being some sort of exponential function here. So really quickly, before we get into some patterns that we see here, I do want you to see that this is why we don't allow the base to be one, because if we have a base of one, we would have some function uh, y equals one to the x. And in this case, it wouldn't matter what you plugged in. You could plug in whatever you want, but we're always gonna have one to the negative two or one to the negative one or one to the zero, one to the one, one to the two, and any possible outcome, uh, we get one as an answer here. And so this would not be considered to be an exponential function, it'd really be a constant function. So exponential functions are any functions where our dependent variable y is equal to some positive non-one number that's being raised to our independent variable here, x. And what's changing is our exponent. The base is never changing here, okay? So some things really quickly. We say that f of x equals x cubed is not an exponential function. If anybody asks you why, it looks like it has a base to a power. This is a base to a power, but our independent variable is the actual base. If we want an exponential function, then we need to have something where there is a, a set base, like maybe three, and our variable is up here in the exponent, okay? So again, acknowledging it in this third bullet point, the variable must be in the exponent or our independent variable, okay? When we look at exponential uh, growth or decay or these types of functions. So we're gonna look at their parent functions first, describe things like domain range increasing, decreasing, and their y-intercept. And you'll notice that I've already got a couple of, actually a couple of exponential growth and decay function graphs on here, but I think it would be really, really uh, a wise idea to maybe set up a table and really explore what these functions do and how they relate to one another. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put x here and let's do this. Let's put a couple of exponential functions. We'll go f of x equals 2 to the x is our first function and let's do another one here. We'll go g of x equals and let's use a base of 4, like 4 to the x here. What would this look like if I started plugging in x values around the origin? we're gonna see some patterns emerge. First of all, it's this zero that I wanna look at. So looking at this, if we were to plug in zero into our exponent, there's a rule that we wanna start with now, and that rule is that anything that's not zero, that's raised to a zero power, is going to be equal to one. So anything but zero raised to zero is one. That means that when I plug in zero into my four to the x function here, I'm also gonna get one. So one thing you can already see that these two graphs are gonna have in common is the fact that they go through zero, one. And in particular, what I want you to see is on the graph right here, that's always this y-intercept point right there. So uh, pretty boring to say, but all exponential parent functions have to go to the point zero, one. If anybody asks you to justify that, that's because you say anything to the zero power is equal to one. Now let's go ahead and plug in, say, one here. Two to the one would just be two. What if I did four to the one? I suppose I would just get four. So something's worth mentioning here, that when I plug in one, I always get the base value back, whatever the base is here. So over here on my parent function graph, I know that this looks like it's at a height of two, but what I want you to do is highlight this. We're gonna write one comma B, where B is the base. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug in negative one. And the reason why is just because to take something to the positive one and take it to the negative one are utterly related here. Remember from your algebra classes uh, that anything raised to a negative power Let's put this over one. If you move the base to the other part of the fraction, okay, so move this from the numerator to the denominator, what happens is the sign on its exponent switches. And so b to the negative n is really one over b to the positive n. That would mean this is the same thing as if I move my two here, this would be one over two to the positive one, or in other words, I would get a half. And likewise, if I do four to the negative one, well, that's, that's one over four to the positive one, which is one fourth, and so I'm gonna box this here, okay? So a couple of things. First of all, this negative exponent here, this is our negative exponent rule, and you need to write this down. But I'm also gonna give this a name here. Whenever you see a negative exponent, we're gonna call this the quote-unquote move it 
the move it symbol. Okay, you need to move it to the other part of the fraction where it's not currently occupying it. And the second thing I want to mention here is this. Two to the first is two over one, while two to the negative one is one over two. And likewise, four to the positive one is four over one, while four to the negative one is one over four. So you'll notice that these tend to be reciprocals of each other, which is fantastic, especially when we're looking for patterns here. So what do I know about two to the two? Two to the two would be four. So what's two to the negative two? Well, I suppose that'd be one over two to the positive two, but that's one fourth. And so again, you're seeing these reciprocals exist. Four to the second is 16. We're gonna play a quicker route this time. Four to the negative two is still 16. It's just one over 16. And so you start to see that these patterns start to occur here. What if then I were to pop over to say Desmos and we take a look at what these graphs look like. Now let me try to drag this back into our view here. But what I've got right now is the graph of f of x equals b to the x and right now our base is two. So you'll notice that this is very much uh, our table that we just got on the other page here. So two to the zero is one, two to the one is two, two to the two is four, and then two to the negative one is the reciprocal of two to the positive one. So there's our half and this 0.25 is our fourth. You can see that this graph here looks a lot like this parent function graph in our notes in that it goes goes through the point zero, 01 and must pass through the point 1 comma whatever the base is okay beyond that you're going to see that as we navigate to the right on this graph it starts to increase more and more rapidly that is to say that our slope gets steeper and steeper and steeper and i also want you to notice that if we were to keep plugging in negative x values on the left here so to extend my table Maybe I plug in, you know, a negative, negative 10. You'll notice that I get some very, very small number here, but it's not zero. And that is to say that no matter how negative my exponent gets here, I'm always going to have one over the base to that positive exponent, which leaves me something that's getting close to zero, but not actually zero. So important things to point out on these graphs, important things right off the bat are going to be that it must always go through the point zero, 01. It must always go through the point one comma B. I'm also gonna put this point out here. It's gonna go through the point negative one comma one over B or the reciprocal of that. And there is a horizontal asymptote that is always on the x-axis or at this y equals zero. So really quickly, do yourself a favor here. We're gonna say x and y equals b to the x. Our parent function, we always wanna find at least three solid points, and these are the three that I tend to ask everybody to find. What's b to the zero gonna come out to be? Well, we're definitely gonna get one. What's b to the one gonna come out to be? Well, you're gonna get whatever the base is. And what's b to the negative one? Well, you're just gonna get the reciprocal of what you got when you plugged in positive one here. So noting these three points really on our graph, beyond this it's pretty boring on the outside so it gets really steep on the right and gets really close to a height of zero on the left here let's talk about then domain and range so one thing's for sure we can always raise a base to a power so that means that any power I plug in is always going to give me a, a, a value back for my y this graph goes left and right forever and ever and has a domain of negative and positive infinity I also notice that it hits all positive y values here so it starts just above zero and goes up forever and ever notice that I'm not including zero because it never quite reaches this asymptote as far as where is this graph increasing, it's always increasing from left to right. And so we say from negative to positive infinity, and it's just not applicable that it's decreasing at all. And in terms of our y-intercept here, we're gonna write zero comma one, and this is a given fact, okay? So really quickly, what we're gonna do is we're gonna compare this to the graph of f of x equals a to the negative x, where I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch this out here. We're gonna call this f of x equals b to the, the negative x here. And what I want you to understand is that when we look at this, this is the same as, I suppose, 1 over b to the positive x, which is the same as 1 over b to the x, okay? So when we look at something like this here, our base, which is this number that's bigger than 0, and, 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 or at least positive and not 1, we can look at this as being some sort of proper fraction. And when you're doing something like this, you know, let's make a table here. Let's make a table. If I have x and y equals b to the negative x, how's this going to compare? Let's go with the same set of inputs here, negative 1, 0, and 1. But if I plug in, say, 0 here, I get b to the negative 0, which is b to the 0, which is 1. So this point still exists on our graph. However, when you look at plugging in 1, how is this different? We get b to the negative positive 1, which is b to the negative 1, which is 1 over b. So where we had our reciprocal value before at negative 1 on this graph up here, now it's at positive 1. We're going to label this 1 comma 1 over b. And then when I plug in negative 1, I get b to the negative negative 1, which is really b to the 1, which is here's I'm getting my base. Okay. And so this would mean that at negative 1 right here, I get negative 1 comma whatever the base is equal to here. So you'll notice 
notice that these two graphs really serve as being reflections over the y-axis of one another, um, but we're really gonna distinguish between these two calling them growth and decay. So really quickly, on this graph down here, what do we notice about its domain? Again, it's negative to positive infinity. So hey, cool fact. Any exponential function always has a domain of negative to positive infinity. As far as the range is concerned, you'll notice that this graph also, on the at least on the right side, gets really close to a height of zero, but never quite gets there. So our range is also still zero to infinity here. This graph is never increasing from left to right, but is always decreasing from left to right, and our y-intercept is still at zero one. So to distinguish between these two really quickly, the other two amendments I want you to add in are these things. We would say that when I have a base to a positive exponent, we're gonna uh, observe exponential growth. And that is to say that as I go from left to right, my values are moving uh, further away from the x-axis. They're inflating. Okay, So they can move away in a negative direction, but still it would be growth, Okay, negative growth. When I have a negative exponent like this here, or a negative in front of my exponent, we're going to observe a, a situation where we talk about this being exponential decay. That is to say from left to right, my values continue to get closer and closer to the x-axis, or closer and closer to nothing, or zero. Okay, So in the next video, we're going to take a look at transformations of these graphs. It is worth knowing, though, what these parent functions look like off the top of your head. And just know that we're always, at least with these exponential parent functions, going to table these same three values because beyond uh, being around the origin here, so going to the right or left of this, our graphs tend to get a little bit more disinteresting. So we just want to look at their behavior around the origin. Cheers.